Our guests today are Scott Kimple and Olga Kavatskaya. Scott is a partner of Hunt and Andrews Kurth here in Washington, D.C. He used to work at the SEC as a counselor to Commissioner Troy Paredes. Scott is one of those go-to people for me. He seems to know everything about the securities law and corporate law. Olga is Assistant General Counsel and Assistant Corporate Secretary at Philip Morris International in Switzerland. Very excited to have Olga. I'm Brock Romanek today on Zippy Point. So can you talk to us, Scott, about the SEC's 2020 interpretive release? What types of disclosures is, is the SEC trying to elicit now? Sure. So, so this came out in, uh, in late February of 2020, and it focused on the SEC referred to as key performance indicators and metrics, uh, so-called KPIs. Just a few weeks later, the whole country shut down due to, to coronavirus, so the release may not have received the kind of attention the commission hoped for, and they, they quickly had to pivot and, and deal with, with more pressing matters. But, but briefly, KPIs are, are the key variables and other factors. They can be quantitative or qualitative uh, that are both peculiar to and necessary for an understanding of a particular company. The guidance provides some examples Oddly enough, they're buried in the footnote. It's footnote 11 if you want to look it up. Um, and, and they include things like same store sales, sales per square foot, uh, total subscribers, number of memberships, energy used. These things will vary by industry, but you're starting to get the idea. They tend to be very customized metrics. Um, and, the, and the thrust of the guidance was to remind companies that if you're using KPIs, and they are material, as we all understand materiality, then they may be worthy of discussion in the MDNA itself. Um, if you're going to discuss them in MDNA, the guidance goes on to say that the SEC would expect a clear definition of the metric, uh, an explanation of why a company thinks it is important to investors, and a description of how management uses it to measure performance. Uh, since the guidance came out, I've seen some companies that have uh, increase their disclosure or even started using headings uh, to sort of cue the reader to that's what they're doing. But it's by no means a global movement and not every company uses these metrics and some that do don't do it um, to provide financial information. They do it because everyone else in their industry is doing it. For, for example, it's hard for a retailer not to report on same source sales. Um, it's just, it's kind of expected. Um, this is an area the SEC has monitored some. Again, I think because of coronavirus, they've, they've been giving companies a little bit more room, but there have been some comment letters. One of the early ones went to News Corp. That got a lot of attention when it came out uh, in the spring of 20. Basically, the staff said, hey, you know, we, we've been listening to your earnings calls. You talk a lot about metrics like uh, broadcast subscribers and unique users, but gosh, you don't really talk about these things in your MDNA, and maybe you should. Of course, the company wrote back, and as, as companies often do when you get that kind of comment, and they say, oh, mea culpa, of course, we'll talk about these things in the future, and here's how it will look, and that's how they cleared the comment. So, uh, I mean, for some companies, this, this is very important. Um, for others, not so much. Like, like anything in the securities laws, it's very, very dependent on what your, your industry does and what your unique circumstances are. Mm -hmm.